Hello everyone, my name is Shres Gizre and welcome to the India-China conflict series. This is going to be the last video in this series, so if you are new to my channel, please do subscribe and click on the i button above to watch the previous videos. And do watch all the previous videos so that you can get the context to this video. And if you have watched all of them, then let's get started. In casting sorrow all through my day. Now before we look at where this all started, let's have an overview of the current situation. Till now there have been 5 military core commander level talks and diplomatic talks are still in process. After these talks, the recent position as described by the Prince Defense Editor Snehesh Alex Phillips is uh, They had gone back initially then they came back uh, and eventually they have pulled back completely from Galwan. Uh, now, one can always argue whether the Chinese pulled back from Galwan purely because they wanted as a, it was part of the, uh, you know, the real time effort to calm down the situation. Right. Or is it because of the uh, sudden surge in the water levels in, hmm. in Galwan? Hmm. So that is something one, one has to keep in mind, you know, when we look at Galwan. There has been uh, large scale pullback in the hot spring uh, area too. Uh, but however, at the uh, at the 17 Alpha, which is the Gogra uh, post, uh, the disengagement has not been as uh, as completely as agreed by both the sides. So that is still a work in progress, right. you know. But however, uh, things have not really changed in uh, in Pangong. Pangong. For example, the Chinese have come in by about eight kilometers inside the LAC, that is into the Indian territory, and they're sitting uh, sitting at finger four. Of course, they're sitting at finger four, five, six, seven. Right. But uh, the last post that they're in is at finger, finger four. four. There has been a thinning down of troops that have taken place at finger four. Those troops have moved back to finger five. Now, this video is dated 4th August, that is around a month ago, but I have still included it because there has not been any dynamic shift in the situation apart from the disengagement that was agreed upon. But by the time I am doing this video, there have been few major developments like India has acquired the Blacktop Hill on the southern bank of Pangongso Lake and also India has occupied a strategically important ridge at the Finger 4. It is being said that these events have caught Chinese by surprise. Now, this whole rumble started back in the month of March in April. Indian Army had delayed its annual summer exercise along the LAC as some of the soldiers had tested positive for COVID. The Chinese side took advantage of this and positioned themselves strategically to block Indian patrolling. Although it said that the Chinese delayed their annual exercise as well, but they had positioned themselves strategically and there onwards transgressions from the Chinese side began. Now there is no exact number on how many transgressions took place but the transgressions that ended up in a border clash came into limelight. The first clash took place on the 5th of May in the Pangongso Lake area and the second clash took place on 9th of May in the Nakula area of Sikkim. But major of all these incidences was the deadly clash of 15th June where 20 Indian soldiers lost their lives. It is said that the Chinese side also had suffered significant loss but China hit the numbers as they always do. Also on the sidelines both sides were rapidly deploying large number of troops. After the clash of 15th June there was no incident of clash but last week things changed when on the night of 29th or 30th August the Indian army repelled the transgression attempted by Chinese PLA. Indian Army took a preemptive action and secured location at the southern bank of Pangong Sule. Now question arises that if Indian Army can take preemptive actions now, why wasn't it done before? Well, I haven't found any exact reason, but from what I have read and heard, I would say that border situation is unpredictable. Any action can act as a provocation for war, and in such case, readiness is eminent. Troops, tanks, artillery guns, aircraft, etc. all should be in position in case of a small-scale war. Nobody wants the situation to pan out the way it did in Galban clash when at a point troops got outnumbered. So Indian army went head to head with China only when they were definite that they are in a position to suppress any aggression coming their way. There is a possibility that we may see such preemptive actions ahead. Also, our current CDS Bipin Rawat had made it clear that military option is on table if all talks fail, which means Indian Army is planning big, results of which can only be seen in time to come. Now, it would be a simplistic approach to just say that China is doing this as they know that the world is fighting with COVID and they are in position to alter the status quo. 
it is true in case of south china sea and to some extent in case of india as well but many analysts believe that in case of india there are some deep rooted reasons as well last year india made a bold move by abrogating article 370 in kashmir although we did it keeping pakistan in the mind but our actions have threatened china as well as china believes that much of the part of ladakh is theirs our action of unilaterally changing the status quo of ladakh into a union territory threw china off the guard and if that's not enough home minister amit shah gave this statement in the parliament main ye baat record par rakhna chahta hu ki jab main सदन में जब जब जम्मू एंड कश्मीर राज्य बुला हूं तब तब पाक ऑक्यूपाई कश्मीर और अक्साई चीन दोनों इसका हिस्सा है ये बात को आ और और हमारे संविधान ने जम्मू कश्मीर की जो सीमाएं तय करी है और जम्मू कश्मीर के संविधान ने जम्मू कश्मीर की जो सीमाएं तय की है उसके अंदर पाक ऑक्यूपाई कश्मीर और अक्साई चीन दोनों समाहित This claim by our honorable home minister in the parliament and India's refusal to back down from building a border infrastructure has increased China's insecurity and hostility towards India. China has been increasing transgressions for a year now since abrogation of article 370 and they were just waiting for a suitable condition to acquire Indian area and the pandemic just provided them with a perfect cover. This Chinese aggression is not just about expansionism. China also wants to make a symbolic gesture that India should stop thinking about aksai chain clearly india is not willing to succumb to this now we had standoffs with china before as well we used to have standoffs and then after military and diplomatic level talks disengagement used to be done but something changed this time as i said earlier india had five core commander level talks with china till now but it seems that they would have reached a roadblock surely china has disengaged from galwan and hot spring gogra post but it has refused to even hold talks over pangong region that is the finger areas looks like China is ready to disengage but not completely they desperately want to acquire some area this might have something to do with the past of doklam as explained by jayant ranade an expert on india china affairs i could mention one point which is what happened at doklam at doklam after 73 days of pure vitriol coming from chinese propaganda threats every day uh, we of course kept our cool but when the disengagement happened there was a lot of disappointment in china uh hu chiu shen who is the editor in chief of the global times yes very nationalistic and strident kind of individual including on his tweets he i remember put out a tweet immediately saying the people of china are very unhappy i am with them uh subsequently uh, there were a lot of commentators military commentators who have been very supportive of xi jinping who also came out with various comments saying our army was strong what happened um, we have uh, always felt that india is not really a worthy opponent uh, what has happened uh, why did we get beaten why did we not get what we wanted etc but the second day there was a rumor that swept through china and rumors are not very common there of this kind saying that xi jinping had promised india 20 billion yuan in order to agree to a disengagement now the seriousness of this i'll just illustrate it by saying that the people's daily which is the official and authoritative party newspaper published a denial of this uh, rumor the chinese ministry of foreign affairs their spokesman he denied this rumor and the ministry of national defense of china their official spokesman denied the rumor so obviously the rumor was pretty strong but some in substance xi jinping did get criticized for that so this time it could be even more and we don't know how many lives the chinese have lost that's another issue that might come up Just a correction from my side the name is Jaydev Ranade and not Jayant Ranade the complete pullback of chinese troops would cause embarrassment for xi jinping and in addition to that rumor like one in the past would cause more problems because even though the rumor is false by the time facts come out the damage has already been done xi jinping cannot risk this as he is gaining political opposition from within his party 2 billion agar japan mein aayengi to unko de rahe hain और 200 मिलियन उनको दे रहे हैं जो फार ईस्ट में कहीं और जाएंगी सो कंट्रीज ने फंड्स भी शुरू कर दिए हैं। नहीं नॉट ओनली दैट इज करण जी सिर्फ वो बात नहीं है मैं आपको असली बात बताता हूँ 
देखिए बात ये है कि अब कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ चाइना जो है ना जो कि एक ही पार्टी है चाइना में औरतों को पार्टी है नहीं लाइक like इंडिया में सौ पार्टी वहां पर तो एक ही है कॉम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ चाइना अब कॉम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ चाइना का जो शी जिनपिंग है उसका बॉस है और वो बॉस लाइफ लॉन्ग है वो मरते दम तक बॉस रहेगा उसको इतनी पास दे दी है और माउथ से तुम के बाद कहते हैं कि सबसे पावरफुल लीडर सबसे तगड़ा शक्तिशाली लीडर वही है शी जिनपिंग शी जिनपिंग पिंग का जो नंबर टू और नंबर थ्री है कॉम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ चाइना में उसने शी जिनपिंग की जड़ें खोदना शुरू कर दी एक लेटर उन्होंने जारी करा था कि अब हमें फेथ नहीं है हमें भरोसा नहीं है शी जिनपिंग की लीडरशिप पे ओ। अब वो एक राहत इंदौरी साहब का बहुत मशहूर शेर है ना कि सरहदों पे तनाव है लगता है चुनाव है तो ये वही है मामला ये वही है मामला As stated by Major Gaurav Arya, China has internal political problem and looks like they won't budge. So it's important to see what happens ahead. But as said earlier, India has acquired 30 heights in the southern bank of Pangong So Lake. These 30 heights were previously unoccupied. That is, neither side controlled them. Now, as India has got control over these heights, many analysts believe that India will now use this as a bargaining chip to push back Chinese forces. from finger areas to sirija post where they were located before april 2020 in current times divide is clearly seen in the sections of media where one set of people show pro government news and others show anti government news but one thing is common that they talk about war while one side does war mongering the other side wants to prove how government actions have brought the country to brink of war now i subscribe to neither of those views because i believe that event of war if not impossible is currently far removed Just just to give you an example after pathan kot and uri we were not on talking terms with pakistan and we still have not gone on a full fledged war with pakistan but that's not the case with china in case of china we are having constant talks with the other side now the talks may yield nothing but the very fact that talks are happening is a sign of reduced possibility of war the concept of possibility of war came from the satellite images that were circulated all over the media which showed that china has been increasing military build up like tanks artillery guns combat vehicles etc looking at those images every reporter was acting like a satellite image expert now how do we understand what exactly has happened we've all seen so many of these satellite pictures floating uh and it just looks like that everybody who was an epidemiologist the other day and then virologist after that and then psych- psychiatrist after that after sushant singh rajput died has now become a satellite uh, expert or a sat int expert satellite intelligence expert now satellite intelligence is very tricky to read particularly because the satellite pictures that we are seeing these are very good quality commercial satellite pictures but still their resolution their size uh, their magnification is nothing compared to what governments get operationally or what you can presume that indian armed forces or government of india are getting operationally so when you get satellite pictures of that clarity then it's still possible to define where the exact line or the lac as seen by india and where there is a difference as seen by china exists and what is the area that is between that that is involved and whether somebody has transgressed anybody's line of control or not on the other hand when you see these pictures you will find the line is drawn rather sort of broadly with a broad pen uh, and these are all notional so just the width of a broad pen can be several kilometers which is all that matters it's more than what matters right now because this is not as if somebody has come in 10 15 20 kilometers on some side uh, so on some side so you've seen all the stories in the indian media you are watching every tv channel every evening now is a show and tell and uh, people point to those satellite pictures as if they can tell you pin pointedly uh i mean you can see the vehicles but good satellite good satellites or military satellites will even read the number plates on the vehicles so you see vehicles and you think oh there is a lot of bandobast what's going on a war is about to break out as far as the satellite images are concerned there was a report published in the international institute for strategic studies journal authored by mia nuance and henry boy 
the report stated that based on the satellite images the positioning of military heavy armor and towed artillery was quite rare as compared to the conventional positioning choice of pla and this claim was based on the annual report of us department of defense on the military developments of china in a nutshell this concludes that and they have quite a bit of bandobast in the back but not as much as it's been made out to be because you see those 100 odd trucks standing in a line now if any army is preparing for war they the first tactical thing they will not do is line up a hundred vehicles in one line in a very narrow valley uh, that makes them very vulnerable it does somehow look to me and to many other experts so i'm only saying uh, what they are telling me the chinese have done it because they want to be seen they know that there are so many commercial satellites as now so those will pick up these pictures and these pictures will be seen especially in india and that will raise the sense of alarm to a higher level so there is a great deal of psychological warfare in it i can guarantee to you if the chinese have a dozen guns somewhere india would have 30 and the same view was also corroborated by major gaurav arya warfare if you actually come to do war if you actually come to fight the first hmm. principle of war is that you dig in आप आप पहले अपने ट्रेंचेस बनाते हो आप अपने बंकर्स बनाते हो क्यों बिकॉज द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट टेक्स आफ्टर यू इज अर्टलरी राउंड सो ऑल दो चाइनीज सोल्जर्स वर देर दफिसर्स वर देर इफ आर्टलरी शेलिंग स्टार्ट दिल बी टर्न इन टू मिन्स मीट ये कीमा बन जाएगा इनका सो दे हैव नॉट कम टू फाइट द चाइनीज हैव नॉट कम टू फाइट द चाइनीज नो दैट देर आर अमेरिकन इजराइली एंड इंडियन सैटेलाइट इन द स्काई दे वॉन्ट टू बी सीन दे वॉन्ट टू बी सीन दे डूंग इट डिलिबरेटली दिस इज प्रदर्शन कर रहे हैं यस बिल्कुल आप ठीक कह रहे हैं ये शक्ति प्रदर्शन कर रहे हैं और ये लोग क्या कर रहे हैं चाइनीज की खुले में और जितना खुले में हो उतना अच्छा दिस इज वेरी सिंपल प्रिंसिपल एंड आई विश वी ऑल्सो डू इट आई बीन एडवोकेटिंग इट फॉर द पास्ट टू थ्री ईयर्स इट सिंपल वेन यू नेगोशिएट यू नेगोशिएट फ्रॉम अ पोजिशन ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ नाउ इन ऑल दिस पी एस को अबाउट इंडिया चाइना कॉन्फ्लिक दे हैव बीन टू स्टिकिंग पॉइंट फर्स्ट China killed 20 of our soldiers and India didn't retaliate the way it should and second government is hiding facts as there has been intelligence failure now when the news of app ban like PUBG and TikTok came up there were arguments floating like India instead of giving befitting reply to the Chinese is doing juvenile things like banning apps some even said that we did surgical strike in case of Pakistan why not in case of China is our government scared of China etc 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 now in all my senses i believe that these arguments are nothing but stupid or based on lack of information the banning of apps was done because of data privacy threat and to give an economic pinch to china now its timing may cause such senses but if we look at the larger picture death of soldiers had nothing to do with the app ban and the most ridiculous argument was about the surgical strikes we need to understand that through surgical strikes we targeted terrorists in pakistan and not the pakistan army china doesn't send terrorists in our country in case of china the army's fight at the border now as far as the deaths of 20 soldiers is concerned i'll let mr shekhar gupta do the talking so in fact one of the more nonsensical and unfair lines which has crept into our polarized conversations around this pp14 or petrol point 14 clash is that the chinese came and killed 20 of our soldiers it didn't happen like that whatever happened irrespective of who started this indian army more than got even there this was a hard fight between two tough armies indian army perhaps tougher than the other one and it's not just about him a us veteran and defense expert colonel lawrence tellin tweeted this after the galwan clash so with respect to our soldiers we should stop feeling victimized and start looking at the reality now as far as chinese coming into our territory is concerned even though it's true how much they have come in is majorly based on speculations from the satellite images reality of which we have seen previously but for more elaboration please do watch the whole editorial of shekhar gupta link of which is mentioned in the description section below also mr jaydev ranade said something interesting regarding losing out land to the chinese he says first of all the marker for the lac has moved from pp14 to vainala secondly the first border post the countries have agreed will be a further 1.5 kilometers inland from vainala which means 
that India is now roughly 2.4 kilometers away from what it claims to be the final point of its LAC claim. And that is a 2.4 percent, sorry, 2.4 kilometer area we cannot patrol. China, on the other hand, is simply 400 meters away from their final point of claim. So the disproportion is huge. India set back by 2.4 kilometers, China by just 400 meters. It sounds, um, uh, it sounds, as you said, uh, disadvantages to us. But uh, I look at the fact that this was actually discussed between our core commander, Lieutenant General Harinder Singh, and the Chinese counterpart, Newton, and they agreed on it. So I presume uh, General Harinder Singh would have looked at the topographical advantages to the military by citing the border post where they have finally agreed and by, uh, you know, in the terms of the shall I say pullback or the buffer zone, uh, they would have looked at all that. And I'm, I, I presume that he would not have selected anything disadvantages. But as you said, even if there is a greater disadvantage to India, it could well be balanced by the fact that General Harinder Singh may have chosen a location which has topographical advantage, which would perhaps counter the distance, the disproportionate distance that India is further from the LAC compared to China. That's a good point. Now, there have been goof-ups from the government side as well. Like in case of PM Modi's statement about no one has entered our territory. Now, the statement was specifically in the context to Galwan Valley, but it was clarified later and nothing of that sort was mentioned in the address speech itself. Now, there can be two possibilities. Either the part of Galwan was not included in the speech by the writers or PM Modi forgot to mention the Galwan part in the speech. Either way, the statement created confusion. Along with this, a document admitting Chinese translations was removed from the government website without any clarification. Events like this deteriorate image of the government. Although I agree that government should be transparent, but in this case particularly, it is not going to help that much because common people like you and me cannot do anything about it. At the end of the day, army officers on the ground and Indian diplomats are the one who handle these kinds of issues and they have more understanding than us. I believe that it's okay if government doesn't share each and every detail with us, but they should successfully handle these issues on the back end. All we can do is put our faith in those officers. Now you can like the Prime Minister or dislike him. Point is that it doesn't really matter because PM Modi doesn't handle these problems personally. It is being done by these army officers and diplomats. So the least we can do is put our faith behind them. Now the main question is that what will be the future of India-China relations? Well, for starters, and I'm sorry to bring in Mr. Shekhar Gupta again, but this is what he had to say. What do you think is the way forward when it comes to India and China? bilateral relationship? Look, I was five when the war in 1962 took place. Uh, I lived through that, that scar. It took about 40 years for my generation to not fully but relatively give up our dislike and distrust of the Chinese. I think with this one, Xi Jinping has written off another five decades of India-China goodwill. It's not going to come back. So as long as China is run by this kind of CCP, uh, the China-India relationship is gone. Indians will never trust the Chinese. A very reputed international journalist, Gideon Rachman, wrote an article in the Financial Times where he mentioned that China should be worried in the longer run because India is amongst the four largest economies and China's actions may drive India closer to US. His statement was based on the increasing or strengthening of Quad which is a group of India, Australia, Japan and US. Things have reached to a level where US Deputy Secretary of State Stephen Bugen said that Quad should be transformed into a NATO-like alliance to counter China. And this is just the beginning. US wants India to be the part of Five Eyes Group. Five Eyes Group is an international alliance of five countries, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Britain and US. These countries have agreement of intelligence sharing with each other and it is supposed to be the strongest intelligence network and they want India to be a part of it. Similarly, Britain has proposed a 5G alliance against China 
by the name D10 group which would be a group of 10 countries including India. G7 is a group of 7 developed economies in the world and US now wants India to be a part of it. If we look at all these events, it seems like the West world is now willing to build alliance with India to counter China. Now all these are speculations so it's not necessary that India will accept all the offerings but India will surely use them as a pressure tactic against China. After all, it's like Major Gaurav Arya said, when you negotiate, you negotiate from the position of strength. And this is not just it. India's foreign policy and diplomacy in the last couple of years has been countering China as well. The way China is selling weapons to Pakistan, India is selling weapons to Vietnam, a rival of China. China developed ties with Nepal. Similarly, India is developing ties with North Korea. China is using string of pearls strategy against India by positioning ports at Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Myanmar, etc. India is doing the same by responding with necklace of diamond strategy by positioning ports at Iran, Oman and Seychelles. India is not only fighting China on ground but also in case of foreign policies. So looking at the situation with West aligning with India, India might gain a strategic upper hand to China in upcoming future. In the end, I want to leave you with an amazing factoid. Lobby Institute, a reputed Australian think tank, publishes Asia Power Index every year. This index ranks power of a country based on different aspects like military, economy, etc. According to this index, India ranks the fourth most powerful country in the world. Our score is similar to Japan, which is third position, whereas US and China are number one and number two respectively. Now, we may see the vast difference of scores between India and China, but the point is, India may be a lesser power than than China, but it is not so less of a power that China can push over and get away with it. On that note, I would like to end this video. Up until now, whatever I have said in this series is my understanding or opinion from what I have read and heard. You can have different views and if you do, please leave your suggestions in the comment section below. If you like the video, like, share it with your friends and family and please do subscribe.